You're listening to The Voluntary Life, where you can hear ideas for finding freedom in an unfree world. Visit thevoluntarylife.com to connect with the show and hear all past episodes. Here's your host, Jake. Hi, it's Jake here. Welcome to The Voluntary Life. This is an episode about what you need in order to start a business. And specifically, uh, I want to talk about how to choose what kind of business to start. Um, I had a number of people ask me this, um, people who really have keen on becoming entrepreneurs and really interested in starting a business and they're thinking about doing so but they don't don't really know what kind of business to start and often they talk about an ocean machine and not knowing what they'd be passionate about and so forth so a lot of people have asked me about how to decide what kind of business to start i think there are a couple of things that can make this a lot easier to think about so that's what i want to share with you today When people think about this, they often think about it in terms of finding a big idea and getting uh, a really clever idea for a business. Actually, I don't think that is nearly as important as these other two things to think about uh, when starting a business. The two most helpful things that you can have in order to choose what kind of business to start is, number one, to be a customer for the solution or product yourself and number two to have experience of the industry Uh, if you have both of these then you're in a really good position to start the business but if you have neither of these then it's going to be very hard for you uh, to start the business so let's talk about each one individually first of all being the customer yourself for the solution or product that you're planning to start a business around. This is what is called eating your own dog food. The reason that this is helpful is because so many uh, startups fail to produce something that other people want. That's what makes them fail. Uh, The key to success in starting your own business is to create value for other people. And in order to create value for other people, you really need to understand what other people want and need. And it's a lot easier to understand that if you yourself want and need the solution to whatever problem it is that your business is based around. And you may have seen um, Steve Jobs talk about this when he was live. He talked about Apple being a company that built products for themselves. His view was that he wanted to create products that he would be proud to share with his family and friends and that he needed That's really the idea um, behind a lot of the decisions that uh, he made about the development of products at Apple. Also, if you're building a product that you need and that you will continue to use, then it's going to help you to consistently improve and refine and develop and evolve the product because you yourself will get an understanding of the customer experience and you'll be able to see whether or not this is something that works for you. I've heard Phil Libin, the CEO of Evernote, talk about this, where he previously launched a couple of other businesses that were in industries where he wasn't uh, a potential customer. And he talks about how much easier it is at Evernote uh, because he is a user of Evernote, because he wants to have the solution that Evernote provides. And he and all of his team are able to talk about their own experience as users and to continue to improve the product Um, because they themselves uh, provide themselves with immediate market testing, if you like. So that's a really, really helpful thing to do, is to start a business in an area where you yourself uh, want and need the solution to whatever problem your product or service provides a solution to. However, there is another thing that is very useful, and that is to understand the industry that your business is going to be in. What I mean by that is understanding how... Business works in that industry, how money flows in that industry, what the, the constraints and context are for anybody who wants to do business in that particular field. So, for example, that could include an understanding of where your customers shop or where they go or how you can meet them and, and link to them or reach them, who potential distributors are for the, the solution that you're going to provide who potential affiliates are, um, what the sort of 
other major issues in the industry are. And typically you can get this kind of knowledge from either working in the industry or from having close contact with other people who work in the industry, friends and family and so forth. There may be some industries where you know you have an idea for a product where you're not going to be a potential customer. So I mean in, in my case my consultancy company provided analysis consulting to shopping center developers and I'm not a shopping center developer and I, I did not have the ability to see how my product would help me in a role as shopping center developer because I was never in that job. Um, so I relied on my understanding of the industry and I had to learn what customers needed. I wasn't able to eat my own dog food, so to speak. Understanding of the industry is very, very helpful because it can show you how it is that customers will use your product or your solution, even if you don't get to be a customer yourself. If you do need the product that you're planning to produce, but you don't understand the industry, then that's a gap in your knowledge that you need to, to focus on. So what about if you have an idea for a product where you're not ever going to be a user of this product and you also don't have any experience or knowledge of the industry? This is the kind of idea where people have a bright idea based on a very abstract understanding of things. Typically, MBA students are the kind of people who come up with this kind of idea. They think, oh, look, you could take this technology from that industry and you could apply it in another industry and that would provide a new solution. I think if you don't have the experience of being a customer for the thing that you're producing and you also don't know the industry, you really are flying blind. And I think it's going to be much, much harder for you to create a viable business. You'll need to gain an understanding of the industry and to gain an understanding of what the customer needs too. This is a, the kind of thing where there's a danger of falling in love with a clever idea because you think, wouldn't it be clever to apply a particular technology in a novel way or something like that? But if you don't understand what customers need and you don't understand how the industry works, then the likelihood that you'll create something that people don't really want, that doesn't, doesn't add value for them, is much, much higher. So that's where I think you should be most cautious about starting a business. So I think the takeaways of all of this are... If you are thinking about starting a business and wondering what kind of business to start, ideally, try and start a business where you are going to eat your own dog food, you're a potential customer or user of the product, and where you have some experience or knowledge or insight into how the industry works. That may well not be possible. That wasn't possible in my case because I was uh, developing a business-to-business -business service and it may not be possible in your case because you just may not have experience in an industry or you may be developing something that you're not going to be a user of. So if you can't develop a business where you're going to be a user and you have industry knowledge, I think the one that's possibly more valuable is the one where you are going to be a user, where you really understand what customers need and you're developing something that you yourself um, are going to use. Um, I say that even though my business wasn't that kind, but I've heard a lot of people talk about um, how useful it is to really understand the product by being a user as well. So I think that might be more, more valuable. You can learn about the industry. So if you can't have both, I would try and go with understanding of the product or being a user of the product. And if you only have one of these two key advantages, then it's useful to focus your attention on how you can get good enough knowledge of the area where you're, you're missing out. So in my case, I was never going to be a shopping center developer, but I was able to talk to a lot of them about their jobs and about their work and the constraints on them and how they purchased consultancy advice and what the issues were. And that enabled me to really have more of an understanding about what my customers or clients' needs were. So I hope that's helpful. Thank you so much for listening. And if you have any feedback, I would love to hear it. Do email me or post something on the Facebook page and look forward to hearing from you. Thank you for listening to The Voluntary Life. If you have feedback about the show, please email jake at thevoluntarylife.com. 
If you enjoyed this program, please share the podcast with your friends or click the donate button on thevoluntarylife.com.